What is going on? Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, the channel in which I bring Botafogo news in English. It's been a very, very tough few days, few weeks at the Botafogo camp. The team comes from four straight losses in the Brazilian championship. We went from one game away from being first and now we are in the relegation zone, which is a very dangerous zone. The Brazilian championship is a very tough tournament due to how close the teams are in level, how competitive they are. Of course, there's going to be some teams like Palmeiras and Flamengo and Atlético Mineiro. They're going to be above the rest, but really everybody else is about the same. And some of them are not too far down from where these three teams that I spoke about are. The club's going to have four very tough matches ahead. We're going to play Sao Paulo this coming Thursday, followed by Internacional, and then we're going to play Fluminense in the Derby. It's called the Grandpa Derby because it's the oldest Derby in Brazil. And we're going to play Red Bull Bragantino. And yes, it's a, an affiliate of the Red Bull clubs like Red Bull Leipzig, Red Bull Salzburg, Red Bull uh, New York Red Bulls. So it's from the same same team. They just have one in Brazil now. A lot of the Botafogo supporters are upset at Luis Castro for his lack of consistency within the team's starting lineup. The lineup is never the same. He's changing players, he's playing players out of position, just like he did against Avaí, where he got Vinicius Lopes that was playing as a right winger, in which the game before against Goiás played as a striker, number nine. But at, at the end of the game, he was the best player. He put him at right back. And we never saw uh, Vinicius Lopes again throughout the rest of the 10, 15 minutes that we had because he wanted to put Mateus Nascimento as a central attacking midfielder instead of a second striker. And then he took Shai out of that position and put as a right winger. A lot of really weird things have been happening at the Botafogo camp. I'm not sure why this all of a sudden this melancholy started, you know, to come from. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It could be some of Luis Castro's press conferences in which he said not once, not twice, but three times that, you know, we don't have players of the level of the Brazilian championship. So that could, in the player's mind, the ones that are sitting on the bench and the ones that are playing, thinking, hey, my own manager doesn't think I'm good enough. So why even try hard if I'm going to end up at Botafogo B or end up at Molenbeek there in Belgium, which is another team from uh, John Texter that he said that some players from Botafogo might end up there at Molenbeek. So I don't think it's the right thing to say, especially to the press. And I think John Texter also said that he's going to try to bring in eight starters, eight players that are top level when they come to play in Brazil. And for the starters that are playing right now, you know, that doesn't really exactly send the right message as well. I think these sort of topics should be spoken about in private. I don't think it should be something to speak to the press or speak to fans or speak to whoever. I think these kind of things need to be kept, um, again, private. The second transfer window is coming. A lot of Botafogo fans are also upset at director of, I guess I can say director of sports or director of football, uh, Andre Mazuku, because of some of the players that Botafogo spent money on but then they're not performing at the level that they should be performing, like Lucas Piazon and Cheche. The two of them are like zombies in the field. They're just Cheche. There's a mistake at every other action that he does. He's missing easy passes. He is not being, he doesn't have the intensity. And the same thing goes for Lucas, Lucas Piazon, which is even worse than Cheche. Patrick Gipalo, which was the club's most expensive signing to date, has yet to show what he came for. He hasn't really done much, and you can't say that the game against Ceylonja was a game that he showed something because the level of Ceylonja is a team that's not even good enough to be in the fourth division of the country. So when we're speaking about reinforcements that will come in the second transfer window, we're starting to doubt some of the names that are coming. We want players that are going to be and make an immediate impact, which was the 
the thought process behind some of these players, but it never happened. So we're talking about players like Zahavi going ahead and, and, and securing that transfer. Players like Lucas Leva or Luis Gustavo, which are really good holding midfielders that the team really needs right now. We're talking, we were talking about Bruma, which is a winger from, I forget which Portuguese team, but that doesn't really matter anymore because Bruma is now going to play for uh, and it's gonna play in Turkey. There's a lot of work to be done both in the field. There's a lot of work to be done in the field and in the dressing room. There's a lot of work to be done inside the pitch and outside of the pitch, especially with the player's mentality, the player's will to go ahead and think, get things done. And also from Luis Castro and his assistants, with the way that we play, we've presented something different in every single match. We never repeated the same lineup, so it's hard for players to get accustomed to each other if they don't play regularly, even though they do train together weekly. If you haven't subscribed and you haven't liked, please click on the subscribe button because it's free. It is completely free to sign up here to the channel and get free content, and you can click on the like button so more people can see this video. See you on the next one. We have a game tomorrow, so hopefully we will win.